Apparently, if you turn subtitles on in my videos, it thinks that I say, Hi, it's Honest Luke here, but of course, it is not that. It's Hi, Von, it's Luke here, and welcome back to another video. You join me today for a Garage Goals episode. I'm here today at Romans International. A very foggy morning here, I must say. Uh, you currently join me outside in the courtyard where they have some pretty hefty SUVs. Didn't realise the difference between the uh, new G63 and the 4x4 squared. Giant things they are. Uh, but I'm outside in the courtyard for now. I've got a couple of cool things. I've got a grey Urus in the corner. There's mainly SUVs out here, uh, apart from the other side where they've got a few supercars. But I'm here today, like I said, to film a Garage Goals episode. Now, those of you who follow me on Instagram will know the kind of update coming to this series, I suppose you could say. I seem to be branching out all of my series recently, as of course the uh, Hot Hatch head-to-head -head video that has just gone live and kind of incorporating a few other cars on that as well. But for those of you who do not follow me on Instagram, you probably don't know the update which uh, I'm bringing to Garage Goals. Uh, initially when it started, it started just off uh, me visiting car collections around the world. I'm not, that was good and it will continue, but I just couldn't make as many videos as I liked. I love making these videos, so I thought, well, seeing his name is Garage Goals, Garage can mean car collection or it can mean car garage, car dealership. Um, and on my travels around the world, I do come across some pretty good ones. But seeing as I'm here in London, uh, the south of London actually, is where I am, um, I've got a free morning, I thought I'd pop in here and show you guys because they never have bad stock. Uh, there's, there's loads of cars, especially inside the show, which I'll get to later on. Now, uh, I've actually come here a few times beforehand uh, to, to film videos. Uh, first of which was with my buddy Damien from the Car Guys collecting his F12 TDF. Filmed that video literally right there. That was cool. He's still got that car. Uh, done a few thousand miles in it, I believe, up till now. And uh, another time was when I came uh, to see another TDF. Common theme going on there, that, that tends to be a, a, the theme with most of my life, to be fair, uh, with a £30,000 paint job. It was like matte blue. It was stunning. It was amazing. But yeah, without further ado, I think we'll have a wander around and uh, see what kind of stuff they've got here at Romans at the moment. Using this really busy road, uh, which is situated right next to Romans, we have the, I don't know, supercar section of the courtyard. A couple of our rates, this one finished in a gorgeous blue with the black accents, gloss black multi-spoke wheels, all black badges, what was that? Yes then, Golfar. That one's a nice one too. Um, that's really loud. Next to that, this really caught my eye. This would be a, quite a suitable upgrade to my Golf R actually, an M2. This one fitted with the factory carbon kit. So check out that little bit there. That's really nice. And we've got little canards on the front as well. I imagine it's got some wing and a diffuser as well. Yeah, it does. Oh, and the M Performance exhaust. I really like this. How much is this? Nice GT4 as well. A couple of other things which I'll get to in a moment. 38,000, well, 39,000 technically. Hmm, that's rather nice. What do you guys think? Do you think an M2 should uh, replace the Golf R once I've finished with it? That's interesting. Next uh, to that, we've got a nice black GT4, Carrera GTS. I love these things. These sound so good. Very understated and uh, flipping fast as well. Hurricane Spider finished in, I don't know the color name, yellow. That'll do. Yep. You can pick these up for such a bargain now, 174,000. I think there was about 250,000 uh, brand new. I remember when I visited VMAX in, in, in the coupe variant and got up to what, like 205 mile an hour? Absolutely rapid things. And the Nero 488 Spider next to that, 675 LT Coupe, uh, MC Stradali, an SLS, and a Lusso. This thing is really, really nice. I think it's fair to say I absolutely adore the 675, obviously. 3.8 litre twin turbo V8, LT meaning long tail. Even though this car is only about three centimetres longer than the 650S, which it's 
very slightly based upon. Uh, this particular car is finished in an MSO colour called Mayan Spark. I think that's how you pronounce it. Initially I thought it was uh, Papaya Spark, but I presume that that's still quite a similar colour. Um, but yeah, what is there not to love about the 675? You can tell this one's done some nice hefty miles because the uh, titanium exhausts are turning nice and blue. But anyway, I think that's enough for outside. I'm sure that this uh, all this road noise is probably getting a little bit annoying. And my hands are about to fall off because it's absolutely freezing. So let's head on in here where we have... Um, well, the, the bar goes from 10 to 11 really. We've got a Senna and a Veyron. So let's go. How's this for a little lineup then? Check out the colour on this Senna. It's called Emerso Norello Red. This thing has done literally one mile uh, and is up here for just under the one million. We got a Veyron, the uh, original 16.4, Midnight Blue 918, Vanquish Shigato Coupe, and then the new Bentley Continental GT. I mean, these three cars alone, insanity. Now this really caught my eye. It's really not very often that you see a Speciale with the gloss black painted roof. And it's also not often that you see them without the stripes. Now I think personally the Speciale really does need the stripes. Um, I mean it's a Speciale, I mean it's, a, it's one of Ferrari's hardcore lightweight cars and the stripes are, I think, a must. Um, but this spec is really quite nice. I mean it's a very subtle spec. The Grigio Silverstone, the satin black wheels and the yellow calipers. It goes together so so well. We've also got a Performante Spider sat there. Uh, a Turbo S exclusive series. These things are really really quite special. Check out that carbon central stripe. So so cool. You really don't see these very often. I'm not sure how many were made. I believe around the 99 mark I believe. Um, but really, really special cars. Let's have a look and see how much they're asking for this. Did a 350,000 thing. See that in that corner there? 350,000. Wow. Now this really caught my eye. This is a V12 Vantage AMR. Now only 300 of these things will be made. And to put things lightly, it's the most powerful Vantage they've ever made. It's got 595 brake horsepower from, of course, a naturally aspirated V12, meaning it's pretty much on par with a GT12. Now when you look at it, it really does look a lot more subtle and kind of less bonkers than a GT12. Obviously you have narrower arches at the back, you have a smaller wing, you have kind of a smaller front splitter, little canards there. You don't have the lightweight wheels, but you do have some funky stripes and a lot of carbon. And I mean, a lot of carbon. I mean, pretty much every little panel you look at has an ounce of carbon on it. But yeah, nearly 600 brake horsepower making this the most powerful Vantage that they've ever made. And yet, it doesn't look that bonkers. I mean, it looks cool, but not that bonkers. Tucked away in the corner, we have a 911R. I absolutely love these things. This spec as well. Both stealthy and clean as well with the silver wheels. And then we have the 280SL Pagoda in the corner. is this. I have so much love for the whole range of the Vanquish Gigato. In fact, the other day when I went to the uh, London Classic Car Show, I saw my first shooting brake variant of this. Unfortunately, I didn't make a video there um, because I wasn't there for very long, but hopefully in the future I'll be able to capture one on video. But this car is finished in the most unbelievable spec. So the first thing you'll notice is the paint. Now, officially according to this little plaque at the front, the colour is called Green Q Special Paint, so I presume that it's a paint which uh, is only available in Aston Martin's Q department, which is of course basically the equivalent of McLaren's MSO. Now it has the Villa Deste pack on both the interior and the exterior. Now basically what that means is all of these gold parts here. So we've got the side blades, the bronze tinted diamond cut wheels, and a few other bits here and there. But it also goes into the interior. So if I can come zoom in, 
We've got some more gold bits here and there. In but fact, the whole interior is pretty bold. But just look at the fleck in that paint. It really doesn't picture very well on camera as you'd expect, but I absolutely love these things. To the right of that, we have a really, really nicely specced Bentley Continental GT. It's good to see some of these rolling out onto the roads now. I think they're a massive, massive improvement from the previous generation. It definitely needed a spruce up, and that is definitely what it's got, that is for sure. But let's head on down here to have a closer look at these three cars. Now let's go back to this Senna to begin with. Like I mentioned earlier on, it's finished in MSO Norello Red, which is the most gorgeous colour. I've never seen uh, Norello Red before. I don't know if it's a new colour or what, but this particular car is specced with the satin carbon across the whole front end, up on the nose bridge, and uh, towards the back over the wing, etc, etc. It's got the Gorilla Glass fitted. I'm yet to see a Senna with the, um, without that option, if it's just painted. Um, but we've got no secondary colour. Normally you can tell that when you come down here. Let me have a look at the arrow in there. It's too dark to really show you, but that's Norello Red in there as well. Like I mentioned as well, this thing is covered one mile. Delivery mileage and it's up for like 995,000. So yeah, that's pretty cool. But in the corner we have the original Bugatti Veyron. Such a legendary car in the car world. This one, according to this sheet, is only covered 800 miles. Finished in metallic black with the cream interior. Really, really nice spec. And it's almost quite refreshing to see one of these things. Just a 16.4, not even like one of the, the later models like the Grand Sport or the Super Sport, or even a Chiron. It's nice to just see kind of where Bugatti started, minus some of their pre-war cars. Um, but this car is, I mean, it's a legend is what it is. And of course, to finish off the lineup, we have the Porsche 918 Spider. Now, this car actually belongs to a friend of mine, Dan, over at the Luxurious Cars. I've seen it on a number of occasions, uh, previously in London and even Monaco, surprisingly. Like I said, finished in uh, midnight blue, although some purple flecks in the paint. Really, really nice colour. I haven't really seen it up close um, like this before, especially with the with the showroom lights shining down on it. Now, inside, we can't really get a really good look, um, but we've got a brown and blue leather interior and all of that carbon. Of course, the 918 has got that removable roof section, which stores away in the front. The only member of the Holy Trinity, which was a convertible right from the get-go. Obviously, we have the LaFerrari Aperta now, but that uh, came at a later date. One of my favorite features of the 918 is those twin exhausts. I mean, I've never been passenger in a 918. You can just only imagine just how loud it is from inside when you've got that what 4.6 litre V8 literally right behind you and uh, they're pretty much straight pipes straight from the engine. Now this specific car is fitted with the Visac pack so we've got the multi-spoke wheels finished in gloss black. Now you can um, have these wheels uh, if you don't have the Visac pack but the main reason which I know it is is of course this rear carbon section here. I think the Visac pack uh, albeit is an expensive option from factory uh, even though they don't make the 918 anymore, it just makes it look so much better, especially towards the rear. Of course, we've got the wing up at the moment, but regardless, an absolutely stunning car, and with some pretty good company as well. So there we go then, another visit here at Romans, as per some wicked cars. The spec on that Senna, Norello Red, stunning car. I really hope I see some more McLarens in the future finished in that colour. But anyway, the first episode of Garage Goals, which is at a garage or a dealership. <laughs> but anyway, yes, I think I'm gonna round up today's video here. I hope you guys have enjoyed. If you have, as always, please make sure you leave a like and make sure you subscribe for all the adventures to come. <laughs>